I just say that we were in the middle of the mix right now, and Superstar played uh, Dedication and Keep Your Head Up, and I like legitimately started crying. Like, uh, <laughs> it was that bad. She had to play Keep Your Head Up. I know, but I mean, I don't know. Tupac of my generation. Listen. It's the Beat to Beat podcast, DJ Hella Yella. And Ashley with two E's on air. I guess this is a special edition, you would say? Well, we should start doing this weekly anyway, now that I have this. So okay. We're kicking off. Yeah. We're, we're rolling. F- um, us doing the marathon 10 times harder now because of yesterday. <laughs> we're running extra laps today. Yes, running extra laps. It is a hard day for the hip-hop community um, because of the passing of Nipsey Hussle last night. First, like, I was introduced to Nipsey when I graduated high school. So, like, little-known fact is when... So, I say Thomas graduated a year after us because he was um, held back a year. So, I graduated in 07. He graduated in 08. And he went straight to University of Washington. In 08 is when... Nipsey first started really touring and he was in Seattle and Tacoma a lot because his hair braider lives up there and his DJ <laughs> VIP lives up there. Was so, that the uh the tour with Kendrick? Yeah. And so And and Game, I think Game yeah. was on that too. Mm-hmm. And um I had still lived in Washington, so like we I went to one of his shows, but that's where like everybody in Tacoma, like West Coast period, like we, you know, we we mess with each other, but that's when I really found out who he was. And then ever since then, like his and Isaiah's relationship, you know, stayed. And then I just always followed him like through his mixtapes. So fast forward, when I get into radio on his last promo run, remember, he was supposed to come to my old station before. I remember that because I was going to come too. Yeah, because you're supposed to come too. And you're like, my homie wants to know, should he wear his Crenshaw shirt or not? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And um, I was like super excited. Like everyone in Atlantic know there's two people. This is before Blueface, but there's two people everyone in every label knows about me is that I love Nipsey Hussle and I love Drake. So they're like, if they can make it happen, they'll make it happen. They tried to, but you know, going from Dallas to Houston, you get caught in traffic and whatever. They couldn't make it happen, but I was like, oh, it's cool. You know, I'm going out to LA next week anyway for All Star and that's the the weekend Victory Lap was released and all this. And then I get out there. We never link up again. (laughs) <laughs> because of just like his schedule was crazy and then even now they're talking about he was in dallas recently and um rogers is pretty close to him it was like oh he's coming to houston like you know i'm gonna make sure he comes up there our atlantic reps like yeah we're gonna make sure you know we bring you nipsey da, 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 and then this happened so for me it was just like a major oh wait when was this supposed to happen no just like he was getting ready to do like a radio promo run again because of um racks in the middle oh and- yeah and um, he had went to Dallas for something like unrelated to, I don't know what he was doing up there, but he was hosting something and he was supposed to come to Houston just to do like a radio promo run and then do a, you know, host a club afterwards. Mm-hmm. And, and um, they were just all like, yeah, we're going to make sure he comes up there. We know you're a big supporter. You're a big fan. Like I put a uh, dedication on the freaking mix show list. <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. And- Rogers was the only one that could really spin it anyway. Like, we were like, I was a heavy Nipsey. Like, I have marathon t shirts, like, from the marathon company. I have Nipsey t shirts. So, to me, it was a big blow. But more, I think more importantly, uh, it was just a big blow because, of, like, who he was outside of music. Like, he wasn't just a rapper here to get money. Like, he was doing shit. Like, for yeah. So, like, I think that's why I just hurt everybody so deep. But tell us your introduction to Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna be fake. I used to think Nipsey was kind of whack back <laughs> in like 2009, 2010. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I just do whack. He still got braids, blah blah blah. And then Duro had put him on the. Uh, I used to DJ for Duro for those that don't know. He put him on the Ice Cream Paint Job remix, the West Coast remix. They did it at the BET Hip Hop Awards and everything. I was like, okay, or whatever. He from the West. You gotta do somebody from the West. But then they were shooting a video for DeRoe's song called That Low End. Mm-hmm. We, were out, we were out in Dallas. It was the weekend after South by Southwest. So it was the Sunday after South by. And Nipsey went deep. And it's like DeRoe, his hometown. So, you know, all of us are in there. It's like 20 random dudes just hanging around the video shoot. And every break, Nipsey made it a point to like just walk around the room and like greet everybody, introduce himself, and just hold a conversation with everybody. Mm-hmm. He, and then he, was, he had uh, hard copies of TMC, passed it out to everybody. It was like, man, 
Give it a listen. Let me know what you think. And then he rolled to the club with us that night. He put everybody on uh, Clico champagne because he wouldn't drink nothing else. Oh, yeah. They- so, <laughs> that's, my, that's my first time hearing about that. Yeah. <laughs> But he was such a he was such a cool dude and like so genuine to everybody and just like a nice guy. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna give us a chance and you know, TMC was jamming and ever since then I was a fan. Yeah. But is that that picture that you posted? Yeah. Where oh. we like twenty deep. Like imagine just him by himself and just like walking around the room with all these random dudes and just, Hey, what's up? I'm Nip, blah blah blah. What you do? What you doing out here? Yeah. Just I talking to, to people. I try to um well, I told you, I was like, there's like 30 niggas in this picture. Like, <laughs> Well, if it, the pick is up on my Instagram at DJ Hella Yella. It's like <laughs> mad dudes in the club and it's Nipsey in like a big red bubble jacket, like right in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we was at Wish in Dallas. So thank you for not being fake and being honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Um, so, I mean, where were you? Like, how, first is how did you find about his death? Where were you? Man. Yes, it was crazy. My one of my friends had a gender reveal yesterday. Uh-huh. So we went out to eat afterwards and to watch the game, the Duke uh Elite Eight basketball game. And the game had just ended. So we like getting all the jokes in, like laughing at the like the basketball memes and everything. Yeah. And then you scroll through the timeline, it's like, damn, Nipsey got shot. And then like, you know, like the information rolls out slowly. Yeah. It's like, damn, he got shot. Then he got shot six times. Mm-hmm. It was like people was like, "Man, he probably not gonna make it." Like, blah blah blah, and just just the mood just changed. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. everybody, pretty much everybody at the table, it was about eight of us, eight nine of us. Was everybody was a Nipsey fan? Yeah. The um, where, where were where were you? I was scrolling through Instagram, and the first thing I saw was Dre Sinatra, my homie out in L.A. That DJs for real and Ty Dolla Sign. He posted a picture and was like, "Yo, uh, prayers up for Nip Man." And I was like, "Yo, no way!" So like, I had to go. I I went to Twitter <laughs> first, of course. Yeah, and it, like everybody that's credible on my timeline was posting the same shit. And then Karen Civil represents him and does his PR. So I went to her page. She didn't say anything, but she put a blue heart. And so automatically, I was like, "Okay, this is true." Like shit. So I looked it up. They said he got shot six times. Then, of course, you know, unfortunately, there were videos of him dead, laying on the ground. Did you see the video? Yeah, like people I try, I try to skip all that shit. Like if I, I see it, I just try to close it as fast as possible. I tried to skip it, but like the the journalist and like inquisitive part of me was like, okay, but I need to see that it's real. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. Even though I didn't want to be disrespectful, I didn't retweet it or anything, but I was just like, I just kind of need to know, like, it was really him, like, that type of shit, and not one of his friends. Because if you've never seen his brother, they look um, exactly alike. So I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I looked at that, and then I texted you, because you're the only person that's, like, as big as a Nipsey fan in my life. So I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, then I went to... I was telling you, and then all of a sudden I got the the notification from like NBC, and I was like, "Nigga, if NBC wrote this shit, like, yeah, once yeah. the NBC hit, I was like, nah, I'm I'm just going like, I'm just keep scrolling. That ain't real. I'm just, yeah, I was trying not to believe it. And I and I know, wow, I just got your text. I'm sorry. All right, but, <laughs> and, and I know, um, I don't know. It's just it was surreal. Like you didn't want to believe it because. He's just such a real dude. Like, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think something that really like resonated is he don't he don't have no big radio or club songs. Exactly. At least to me. But everybody is a fan. Exactly. <laughs> and even if you weren't a fan of his music at first, just like when you started hearing about him making like the stem cell academy research uh, research academy in his neighborhood or buying the block, like you were just you knew he was for the culture and like for his community. He's not like these other rappers that they're just here to make money, you know, and fuck everybody else. Like he was the like thing, the thing. The thing that really pushed me over the top mm-hmm. as like not just like a music fan, but just like a fan of him as a person and a businessman mm-hmm. was the the proud to pay one hundred dollar mixtape. Yeah, and uh, how- I thought that was so. It was just so next level to me. Didn't uh, didn't Jay Z uh, buy like ten copies? Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, if you don't know about the proud to pay, which, which mixtape was it? Mailbox money, I think. Yeah, it was mailbox money. <laughs> so he put the mixtape out for free, but he only printed up a hundred like authentic copies and sold them for a hundred dollars each. So if you really mess with him that much, you could pay a hundred dollars for it, or you just download it for free. Yeah, <laughs> and, and but people and it was a hashtag proud to pay. People were proud to pay a hundred dollars for a mixtape. Yeah. And he kind of solidified. If he wasn't mainstream before, he was definitely mainstream after that. Mainstream yeah. is everybody knew about him or knew his name type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, and because of, you know, Jay-Z's involvement and everything after that. Yeah, Jay-Z bought like 100 copies. Yeah. I like, I'm not ashamed to say this, but I <laughs> out and I like texted you. Like I was like bawling. And, I, and my cousin wrote me because he does like, he does like he covers music festivals and stuff in Seattle and he was like, Yo, like this shit is real. And I told you he ha- he's he's in Seattle a lot. So like people really feel connected to him. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, the city's like so like crazy right now. I have family that lives in like on Crenshaw. They're telling me just more about like gang shit. They're like, yo, sixties are out deep right now. <laughs> like this shit's getting crazy. And I was like, I just remember going to the marathon store. When I went to LA for the All Star Game, and it was a day that Victory Lap dropped, and how proud everybody was in his neighborhood, like people, just how you saw in the videos on Twitter. That's how mm-hmm. it was the day Victory Lap dropped. Like niggas were playing sucker proof, like with their flags out. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. standing for him because like that that man's like their hero. And for me, like I was only six when Tupac died, so obviously I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't old enough when uh, Biggie or Pac died. It yeah. was more like a after effect. Yeah, like after like years years later. Yeah, it's like dang, this dude was dope. But and now- I I never really just felt like this about any celebrity that I've only met in passing. Yeah, like it really hit everybody. I straight up like I know I I know how it feels now because even when I came into work today, everybody was like. Yo, like they just knew how much I fuck with Nipsey Hussle because I wear his shirts and shit all the time. And they're like, Ashley, like, are you okay? Like, we saw your post. I was like, I'm good. It's just, I don't know. It's a somber day. It's a trash day. So very trash day in hip hop. Yeah, a very trash day. Um, well, we both talked about like how we connected to Nipsey, but I don't know what. What about his music made you like? Like, what song set it off for you? Like, what verse did you hear? What I, mean, I can't think of which exact one, but it was definitely the TMC mixtape. Okay. And just the, he always was talking about, you know, running the marathon, running the lap, mm-hmm. just like hustling. He got so many quotables just about sticking to your goals and like, F a hater and just achieving. And yeah. that's what really, that's what really resonated with me from his music. Mm-hmm. I'm like... I can't remember exactly what song it was either, but I do remember his crisscross, the jump freestyle. And, you know, like, I'm from the West Coast, so, like, that whole G-Funk gang banging ass shit, like, I fuck with it. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and the first lyrics, he's like, I'm a crazy motherfucking named Nipsey because I was raised in the 60s. I was like, all right, nigga, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And then that's before YG and them really popped off. So everybody was pushing West Coast to come back again. And then, you know, he came out of Crenshaw, Slossom Boy, Mailbox Money, all that shit. And I just resonate with him. Like, we both used his music in, like, our videos for stuff. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah he just be talking about, like, real shit about, like, uh, persevering against hating ass niggas <laughs> and, like, sacrificing and running the marathon and all that shit. So I just, I just fuck with him. I just thought he was. A real dude. I'm a little sad because now I never got a chance to meet or interview Tupac or Nipsey. Now, um, yeah, I feel luckily like- I, I had a chance to just meet him in in passing. I ain't, I ain't gonna front out here like we was like that was <laughs> hashtag the homie. Yeah, hashtag my guy. Just talked yeah. to a guy the other day. Like, yeah. <laughs> um. So he does say he's this generation's Tupac. I do you feel like that? And I, I, it's hard for me to say because I wasn't around for Tupac's generation. Well, I was around, but I just I was too young. Yeah, but 
I ain't gonna lie, it definitely feels like that. Yeah. From he, from being in this generation and from the outside looking in to Tupac's generation. Yeah, he just didn't have the um the commercial radio play, but he didn't need it. Like Yeah. When I saw um when I saw the videos of everybody out at his store at the marathon store last night, I saw like not just regular people, but like G Easy and his manager were out there. And like <laughs> like wow. everybody was out there just like showing respect and then when you start hearing them play his music everybody's turning up you know what i mean like that was dope and he i think he's this generation's tupac only because tupac was such an activist and like actually did what he said he was going to do and he was like he fulfilled his purpose in more than just making music like he actually you know did shit for black people in the community because his mom was a black panther my mom's mm-hmm. a black panther, so i always connected to to him but to uh nipsey like he just <clears throat> he's a retrian and his family is uh they're immigrants and his dad i met when i went to the, went to their store his dad like still has a thick accent but he works in the store every single day <laughs> and every nipsey created an ecosystem where you don't need anybody like he don't mm-hmm. need anybody. like he employed his entire hood and family bought the entire plaza 18 businesses in total like he made an ecosystem that he does not need to rely on another person. Man, I saw I saw one of his interviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna quote. I'm, I'm probably misquote him, but he was saying the music is just like to get in the door, and he pretty much signed himself to a 360, and like I'm selling my own clothes. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It and- was stuff like that that like really, really touched the people, just to give them a different look or understanding of like I don't have to do it this way you yeah. get it yourself it made him send out to andre sinatra's mix yesterday he played that song with um lloyd when he was signed to epic that they're trying to push it's like oh, uh, I, I played it last <laughs> night i can't think of the name of it right now yeah but they played that song and i like i forgot i completely forgot about that era of Nipsey. <laughs> like i was like feeling myself I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah and i was like damn like i completely forgot about this this era of him <laughs> And then that's kind of like his, like Wiz Khalifa, what yeah. was the song with that corny ass sample? Like right before he blew up, the label tried to make him like a commercial song. And the roll up, no, the uh, say yeah, what's the song? Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like his equivalent <laughs> of that. Yeah, I don't know, he is just a. It was a lot, man, but like last night, uh, I remember going to Nipsey's last show in Austin. Mm-hmm. Was and that- I know I knew I had a video, but I couldn't find it in my phone, so I just like searched my name on Twitter with Nipsey, and just like looking through all the random tweets about Nipsey from like 2012 and that, back it, that you made. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just like random quotes from songs, random yeah. songs I was listening to at the moment, and how it's you like, related to them. Yeah. So we clearly respect Nipsey. Um, as a man, as a businessman, as a rapper. I, I have a question for you, not to cut yeah. you off, but <laughs> we talked about his music, his like impact business wise. Yeah. What are some of your favorite like moments from Nipsey? Um, this is not even to be funny, and I'm not gonna like rate them, but the BT slap got to be in, in the top. Of course, I mean <laughs> that, was, that was like that was a that was a big moment. <laughs> <laughs> um. A moment that changed my perspective perspective on him, excuse me. I think it was either 2015 or 2016. He did his, right after Mailbox Money came out, he did an interview with The Breakfast Club. This was years ago when Charlamagne Man was still black and dark skin. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> he went up there. He was high as fuck. <laughs> I think he just got out of jail. And um, he just he just spit so much game about just, like, how he, you know, how he looks at business, how he looks at, like, the reason I'm so into things like the law of attraction and shit is because partially because of Nipsey Hussle, because he was just giving all these book recommendations. He's like, yeah, you need to read this about, you know, the energy and how you uh, what you direct your thoughts towards and things like that. Like I got into that purely because of Nipsey Hussle. And then um, for me personally, when I like I told you, when I went to the marathon store and I told you. The story of how my Uber would not drop me off on Crenshaw and Slauson. Like, 
I was, it was All Star Weekend, and I had him pick me up at the Staples Center. And it was like, I don't know, like a 20 minute drive or something. And he would not, as we got closer, he was like, oh, this is, this isn't a good neighborhood. I was like, bro, like, just drop me off. Like, <laughs> whatever. And he was like, no, I'm going to drop you off right here. And it was like two blocks away. And I was hella pissed, but I was like, whatever. So then I go in the store, I buy the stuff. Doc meets me there because he had that all money in money truck. So we we're taking pictures for like um, promotional reasons for like, because we were helping promote his album. And then when I get ready to leave, something was going on with my lift. You know, when you go out of town and you don't tell your bank, like if you have too many transactions, they'll like cut you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened to me a lot. Yeah. So then when I was getting ready to leave, my Uber shit wasn't working because my bank had put like a fraud flag on it. So I had to call them, which made me have to be in that plaza for like 20 more minutes while I'm on the phone. <laughs> that was when I saw all the people like he has a fish fry spot right next to him. And then mm-hmm. there's like, a, you know, a nail salon, like typical hood shit that's in a plaza in LA. <laughs> and all the people were like, they had like these big cutout Nipsey heads that they're going to take to the Lakers game that night or they were playing his entire album like out of the trunk of their car. Like they had the all money in truck open. Like people were taking pictures. It was just dope, like to see how his team, like his community, his neighborhood, like fuck with him. So mm-hmm. that I'll never forget. And I think that's like other interviews. I mean, outside of outside of the BET slap, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you if you you know the. Rockets and Lakers got into that fight early this NBA season. Oh yeah, when he like and it's pictures of him like pulling up his pants like he about to run out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. He was real cool with a lot of NBA players like DeMar DeRozan, James Harden. Yeah. So he, he did a lot of work with the Clippers. I think he was like an ambassador for them. Yeah. He was just around a lot of dope stuff. Exactly, but he and especially to not be commercial at all. Yeah, that, that not mainstream. I don't think we ever we never played a Nipsey Hussle song on air, but that's because we're in Texas. In LA, I know they did, but yeah, I know it's different on the West Coast. Yeah, but, but outside of like <clears throat> last time that I checked, and maybe FDT, as much as I ain't last, uh, check me out sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't play them too much in the club. Yeah, like uh, Rogers will drop. I've heard Rogers drop dedication a few times, but. And he'll drop last time to check here and there. But um, yeah. Rogers is the only one here that's like of the culture. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> like he pays attention to that shit and he's on the West Coast all the time. So whatever. Um, So outside of those amazing Nipsey moments, I know we, we have so much love and respect for him and I'm just praising and retweeting dope shit. But are you paying attention to the conspiracy theories? I, I am, but I don't know. I just I need more than just a theory. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not I'm not denying it, but I'm not accepting it either. Yeah. What I, about you? I'll be honest. Like, like I told you, my mom's a Black Panther, so I was raised to never trust white people, pretty much. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you don't know about Doctor CB which is what this whole thing is kind of circling around. Um, He's just a holistic doctor that supposedly cured uh, cured, um, HIV and cancer because of just his vitamins and shit. So the fact that Nipsey Hussle was working on his documentary at the time of his death and then also buying back the block and doing everything that they tell black people we can't do, like... It just makes it seem very weird. You know what I mean? And then also, on top of that, everyone's trying to... People that aren't educated on gang culture, they're trying to be like, oh, it was, a, it was another gang member. First of all, ain't no gang member <laughs> bold enough yeah. to roll up to the epicenter of the rolling 60s in LA, in Slauson, where gangs fucking formed. Like, that is the mecca of gang banging is Slauson Park. No, like... And you would have to get something like that. I mean, I don't know the most about gang culture, but yeah. I know that you would have to get something like that approved before. Exactly. So, <laughs> like, all these things that, like, people are saying, people could just be talking shit, whatever. You know what I mean? But just wipe that the fuck out. You're telling me that this man's... And then also, I heard from... I 
Dre Sinatra confirmed to me when they went to the, the vigil, the entire Slauson Ave, which is that entire street that is like on the side that in front of his plaza is closed off. There's like major construction going on there. Meaning mm. there's only one way the fuck in and one way the fuck out <laughs> from that plaza. Damn. So you're telling me that a nigga shot him six times. No one saw anything. <laughs> the, I think the police report I read said the dude got away on foot and then jumped in a car. Exactly. And then there's this supposed dude on Instagram who was like fleeing and was like, oh, I shot him. Da, da, da. I'm like, my nigga, people ain't that stupid. Like, Ain't nobody going to join the Instagram live while you <laughs> in the so, middle of fleeing. There's another, the one I sent you, there's another guy who just made a good point because I asked my brother about this because we have family that live out there. And my brother was like, the way that he was shot is like military style, like ways that they teach you to execute people. Because my brother's, he was a drill sergeant and he was like the head of artillery for the Marine Corps. Like he's been on multiple tours and shit. He's like, that's the way they teach us to shoot people. Like that's military trained sniper movement. And I was like, ain't no gangbangers shooting like with that much precision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, well, and you know, game managers usually use one hand. You can't do all that. You can't aim that well with one hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. There's just a lot of shit that makes me like, whatever. But, you know, we'll just leave it be and just, you know, pour one out for the homies as it is right as it is right now. You said you played Nipsey last night, right? Uh, okay, so uh, I went on at like 11. Mm -hmm. So it's still kind of still kind of early. Yeah. So as soon as I went on, like I played like Mad Nipsey. It wasn't it wasn't really nobody in there yet. But then later on in the night, uh, it was it was funny. It was like when you know when you're DJing the club, you kind of you have to keep an eye on everybody in the club. And it was like this group of dudes like way in the back. They were really like turning up to everything. They were like on the back side of the bar, like fifty feet from where I was. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm in the middle of like I'm about to drop Rex in the middle, and it's like you got a long long intro. Yeah. And the dude comes up and talks to me. He's like, yo, man, uh, I don't want to bother you, but can you, can you like, please just play some Nipsey? And I was like, bro, it's Nipsey right now. <laughs> and then he, like, he was, he was drunk and he just, like, stopped for a second and was like, yo. And he was like, he's kind of telling me, like, they, they were from the West and how Nipsey, how important Nipsey was to them. Yeah. So at that point, like, I, I ran through a whole little Nipsey set. Yeah. And I know you played last time that I checked at some point. Of course. So what did you play last night? Uh, I got my computer right in front of me. So it was about 110. And I played uh, Rex in the Middle, uh, Everything. Uh, last time that I checked, of course. Uh, Bitches Ain't Shit. He's <laughs> verse on that. Uh, the Motto remix, the West Coast remix. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They had him on there. And you can tell my voice is still kind of gone from last night. I know. I was like, what you been doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a long party weekend. Um, so, he, so what? Yeah, you said you are and, and and dedication, of course. Of course, that's the that you know the funny thing is like I remember last time you came here, you put a screenshot of you like listening to that. But every time when I used to drive down here from College Station, that was always like the number one song on my playlist because I was like, I forgot about that. Yeah, like the put the part in the middle where he was like, um. Some of my sacrifice, I'm done waiting. I'm done waiting. Like I used to scream that shit <laughs> on 290 when I would drive down here, like before I had my job. So I don't know. It just meant a lot. So you know, that's another thing that connects us. And then, um, what are you gonna put in your epitome of Nipsey mixtape? Oh yeah, we dropping this Nipsey mixtape. <laughs> it's so uh, I do a lot of epitomies. Like that's my just my way of saying the best of without saying best of. Uh huh. It's so hard because you could put everything on there and then somebody still be like, man, you forgot such and such. So you're really just trying to find like a good vibe, a good flow and just hit the songs that we personally feel. Oh, yeah. So we're going to try to get that out super ASAP, like before the end of the week. I got you. I already gave you my how many cross songs do we have? A lot. <laughs> like, like half at least. <laughs> So like I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take your list, take my list, and General Mills list, and just Combined. get about thirty out of that probably. Listen, I I want, of course I want dedication, but if nothing else, I just of want course his verse from a uh, YG's I want to bend, like that's my shit. Man. <laughs> so I fucks with it. I um, gotta have the the hotline freestyle to Pretty Ricky. 
Oh yeah. He was talking that he was talking that talk. Yeah. I heard some it wasn't our station, but it was someone else's mix I was listening to and they and I heard on the highline, I was like, What the fuck is this? And then I was, <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay, I got you. I forgot about I just forgot about a lot of shit that's like Yeah. Like so I'm like, all right. And then for like for me, obviously like I was just, I don't know. I was affected last night, but it was really hard to get on air today. Only because at my station, the only other person who really knows about Nipsey's impact is like Rogers. And then Rogers like he's not here until six, so you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like but for but Nipsey had a lot of ties to Houston. So like he does mm-hmm. a lot of shit with Trey. He's here for Trey Day every year for J H Town weekend. Um Yeah. He has that song, isn't it called like Houston something? Yeah. Yeah. Like he had a a lot of connects. To- man, uh, James Harden put out a, a Insta story. He was like, "Man, it's like the worst day of his life." Oh yeah, cause man, was, Nipsey is a solid dude. Like they do, they do not, or they rarely make dudes like him anymore. So I for- <laughs> another thing I forgot to mention uh, when Nipsey was doing the stuff with Kawhi for Jordan Brand. Oh yeah, I was like, whatever they selling. I'm buying. <laughs> I, I got a tweet that says like whatever Nipsey and Kawhi are selling, I'm buying yeah. it. That's exactly how I was um, last night because I I didn't think about it at first. Like you know you're like grieving and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I think Ebro and Charlamagne were like buy what you can from the Marathon Store, stream what you can, buy his music because he owns all his shit. So his family's gonna get you know most of the royalties from it. Mm-hmm. And then I think the Marathon Store at least is set but the other stuff he was working on like he was working on a restaurant and a barbershop i don't know i just i i never met her but i feel definitely bad as hell for lauren london and of course anybody yeah like connected to him you know i saw a clip of somebody like his close friend was speaking but i didn't want to watch it why because she was, cry- was crying yeah yeah and i didn't know like <laughs> if it was really it could have been a random person you yeah don't know. how do you like skip over everything you just don't want to watch nothing <laughs> I I really don't I like I try to just I can't take in that much. Yeah, try to block it out. It's it's, it's heavy. <clears throat> well, like I saw a picture. I saw the picture of him and his daughter at the Grammys. So I was just like, damn. Yeah. Well, I mean, rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle, man. He's like the picture. I just the only thing I regret is that I wasn't in L.A. Like to go be around all those people that went to the marathon store afterwards and like, just, I don't know, just like do it one time. <laughs> I, saw my, I saw my homeboy tweet, uh, Kyle Anderson. He used to play for the Spurs, but he plays for the Grizzlies now. Mm-hmm. And they happened to be in LA on a road trip. He was like, man, I'll never forget being in LA when Nipsey passed. Obviously like when Tupac passes, it was back in the day. It was different. And you couldn't go to one single place to mourn him. Yeah. The, the yeah. news kind of, and like without social media, the news kind of rolled out slowly. Right. Yeah, but the fact that, like, every the fact that when he got shot at his store, like, everyone was going to go there anyway. And then, two, that every that, like, I don't like. Hold on. One, his last, his last tweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, one thing, Nipsey's last tweet that he put out, like, an hour before. Yeah. The news broke. <laughs> Which was, like, it was, I don't know if the word is, like, eerie. Yeah, eerie. Yeah, as fuck. Or like, so he, so he kind of, he kind of knew, like the the enemy was trying to do whatever. But maybe that was his. Do you think he knew? He he might have. <laughs> you can't like judge him by that tweet. You, you, how can you not say that? Yeah, and then an hour later, like all that shit happens. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a heavy heart. It's a heavy day. It's Monday's trash. April's trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, cancel this, cancel it already. Throw the whole play. I'm over it. At least I don't gotta hear no dumbass April Fools jokes today. You probably still will just from like trolls and be like, April Fools. Uh, before we wrap, uh, Khaled has a song with John Legend that's gonna be on his album with Nipsey. So that's gonna be amazing. Off top, yeah, it's gonna give us that Maybach music Ross vibes. I'm I'm predicting. Yeah, and his album <clears throat> is seven. Think. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, Nick Cannon has vowed to finish the documentary on Dr. CB. Oh, that that Nipsey was doing. Mm-hmm. We got to come together as a community. I don't know how else to support him other than buying stuff off of. <laughs> that's, that's that's a great way to that's a great way to uh put a bow on this. Is just 
Yeah. You got you to continue to run the laps. We're going to keep running this marathon. Got to run it 10 times harder. Fuck these hating ass niggas. I ain't nothing like you fucking radio niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. I'm going to be, play, be playing Nipsey all week in my car at disrespectful volumes. I dare you to say some shit to me at my house <laughs> and everyone, <laughs> my office, everywhere. The marathon continues. As I wear my marathon t-shirt and he will too when we get it in a week. TMC. <laughs> TMC. All right. It's been the, the special edition RIP Nipsey Hustle. Long live Hustle the Great. It is B2Beat.